All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, my presentation is called uh, Providing a Great Editing Experience with WordPress and Shortcake. My name is Stanislav Romov. I work as a WordPress developer at Aftonbladet. You can find me on various social channels as well as on my homepage. So I want to talk a little bit about the company where I work. Uh, Aftonbladet is owned by the Ships of Media Group, which is uh, actually a Norwegian conglomerate with about 7,000 employees in uh, 29 countries. And uh, you may be familiar with some of the brands uh, that we operate. And we have just a, a large variety of different uh, news sites, both you know editorial news, uh, kind of long read journalism type of stuff. We also have more kind of lifestyle content, uh, the U Way My Home, and we have some viral content as well. And some of these, such as these two sites, are actually run on WordPress, where we have a dedicated WordPress team. Uh, but today I wanted to talk about uh, site building and um, content creation in general in WordPress. So in this presentation, we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, what we're going to how we're going to enable content editors to have a good content, like content editing experience. Uh, we're going to talk about what WordPress gives us out of the box for this. Uh, we're going to talk about shortcake, and then that's probably a, not a very familiar term to, to many of you. We're going to be talking about how we can integrate shortcake to make the editing experience better for, for um, content uh, editors. And then we're going to have some resources at the end, some good links. So. First, let's break this up into two different concepts. First of all, you have site building. And uh, site building, I think many of you, how many have used site builders, like drag and drop page builders? About half. So, so you, you know what that's like. You, know, you, you install a plugin that lets you easily configure and, and uh, kind of set up different layouts, different column layouts, pull in you know, pictures, rich media, that kind of stuff. And you really want to have you know, all those options. You want to be able to say, that, okay, I want this in three columns. I want a picture, a video. I want some, some, um, some icons here and stuff like that. And you know, for, for, for this, there are a, a, a wide variety uh, of plugins. Um, but many have, have, have used uh, these kind of plugins to set up a site. And just some of the plugins are, are here. <coughs> And I'm, I'm pretty sure many have, have used at least one of these. So that's site building. So site building has a couple of fundamental problems when it comes to, to being accessible to more than just you know, the kind of developer slash site builder type uh, uh, person. First of all, it's, it's very complicated. And, and uh, you, know, you have way too many options in a site builder. How many columns? How much padding do you want? What kind of like? How do you want the images aligned? Like all of that stuff. I mean, sure, it's 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 what we want when we're building a, a site, but it's not what people want when they're writing content. So, you know, too many options. You have a very steep learning curve, um, and you know, most of these aren't even aimed specifically at people who write. They're aimed at people who make sites. And I just I pulled this one up from, <laughs> like, uh, I was searching for like a visual builder tutorial. And it's like, oh, yeah, so you want to add a photo? Yeah, just do all of these things, uh, one after the other, and you'll get your photo. And it's like, this is, not, this is not how people should be authoring content. This is how people should be building sites, maybe, but not authoring content. So <laughs> what is content creation, then, if we break that out? It's about producing content for visitors to enjoy, because every site needs content, sure, you, you need the layout and you know, pictures and stuff like that, but somebody actually has to write content for a site to be meaningful. And the problem comes that you know, out of the box, you, you think of content, you think images, you think text, but there's, there's more. You know, there's, in this example, we have you know, slideshows. Maybe you want people to embed interactive graphics, and um, you want to do some external YouTube embed, stuff like that. But from an editing perspective, and I mean, not like you're building some sort of like landing page. And so what we really want, and in our case at Aftonbladet, where we're, we're building you know, sites for, for where people, journalists, go in and write stuff, is to have kind of like the Medium experience. I'm sure many of you have used Medium. And um, the thing about Medium is that like, you know, there's no complicated layout options. You know, there's nothing, 
disturbing you. Uh, it's all very like seamless and you get like instant feedback and instant previews. So if you're not familiar with, with um, um, Medium, it looks kind of like this. You know, very simple. And then you can click on the little plus button and you can embed various types of content such as images, videos, um, etc. So, you know, this is quite good and we really, we want this. So how can we do this like with WordPress? Because WordPress is a content, you know, a content publishing platform. So there are some kind of more, not page builders, but more content creation tools. And, you know, it, WordPress in itself is actually quite a good creation tool. I mean, that's what WordPress was built. This is, this is about blogs, or I mean, just about writing content. And then you have some projects, front-end editor, which was unfortunately discontinued in, in lieu of the uh, customizer, which is now the preferred way to do kind of front-end stuff. Then you have Shortcake, which uh, we're going to talk about later. You also have Aesop Story Engine, which is qu quite an interesting little startup. I mean, they built their whole, their whole kind of market around this front-end um, content editing tool as opposed to kind of like content uh, build, uh, like site builder tool. Uh, but, but today we're going to specifically talk a bit about uh, Shortcake. So, yeah, and if you have any questions, just ask away. So, like I said, you know, content creation, it's, it's not a very big ecosystem yet. It's, I mean, just the very first long reads were not just not even five years ago. I mean, the Times had the very first with Snowfall, which is very highly publicized. You know, they were bragging that it took, you know, six months to make that thing with all the custom graphics and, and you know, interactive stuff. And the funny thing is that now we can mostly do that in, you know, like an afternoon, pretty much, with all the, the new tools. But the ecosystem hasn't grow, grown too big uh, in, on WordPress just yet, but hopefully um, it will in the future. So it's not a big ecosystem. It's quite difficult to kind of, when you have all these kind of rich uh, widgets, you have, you know, the little different types of embeds and stuff, to show that to the user and do it in a, in a kind of, a reliable way so that it meets you know their expectations so we can show some sort of preview for that and and just you know we saw that that um, medium interface and it looked quite simple but I mean actually it's quite hard to do it's, it's behind every one of those little icons and pixels like there's a lot of work actually um, which you realize when you start digging into it so let's look at kind of what 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 WordPress gives us out of the box for this because primarily, you know, WordPress is, is, a, is a content writing publishing platform. So it gives us kind of the basics, you know, you have your WYSIWYG, your, your what you see is what you get editor. Um, you have, you know, your, your basic formatting tools, your bold, your cursive, your lists, stuff like that, stuff that you would uh, expect. Um, so <clears throat> good start, somewhere to, to start from. Um, and then we also have um, text formats, which is actually something that few people use, surprisingly few people use, but you can actually customize the different formats that, that WordPress provides for you. So for basic stuff, and you can basically, you can just set like a, a, assign a class, a special class or something to all these different formats. So for basic stuff, for text content, it's quite, uh, quite good. And then uh, WordPress has shortcodes which I'm sure uh, many people have used, but so uh, short, I'm not gonna go too deep into short codes, but basically, you know, it's like a special token that you put into the text content, and then that token, when the page is shown, it gets replaced with something. So like uh, the gallery short code is a perfect example. The gallery short code is just, you know, bracket, gallery, and then you enter the different IDs of the images you want, and then ending bracket, and WordPress has, you know, like help, helper for that, so you don't need to actually put that short code in. And then once you view the page, I mean, it's actually just a beautiful gallery. So that's great, but what about, you know, other short codes? Because we talked about all these little, you know, rich snippets that we wanted people to embed, you know, different kind of like video, interactive graphics, and stuff like that. And uh, we'd like, you know, we'd like to show that in the editor as well. And in fact, that's what uh, Shortcake lets us do. So Shortcake, it's a, it's a fairly new plugin. It's, um, it's kind of, you can see it as a standardized way to add user interface uh, to shortcodes. So what it does is it lets you preview these different shortcodes uh, in, directly in the what you see is what you get editor in WordPress. 
uh, it has pretty solid fundamentals. It's it's built by uh, it's built on Backbone, which is uh, actually the same backend framework that most of the WordPress admin is is uh, using right now. They're porting more and more over to Backbone, and I think actually there's not going to be very much PHP left in the, in the in the backend uh, as it looks right now. Um, it has its own fields suite, so we can provide you know different kind of form fields for all these different um, to sh to show, uh, which I'm going to demonstrate. And it's actually it's one of those feature as a plugin um, uh, projects, which which is proposed for inclusion in WordPress core at some point in the future, but just not yet. And it still has quite a, quite a long way to go. So if we look again at our previous <coughs> example, what that could look like with uh, with shortcake will look maybe something like this. So instead of that boring, you know, that boring kind of text in there, we can get like a beautiful preview of what that short code would look like in the editor. So I'm going to try to do a demo. We'll see. I'm not sure about the track record hasn't been great, but we'll see. Um, so here we go. We have here we're, um, we're just in a WordPress site. We have Shortcake installed, which is a plugin. And then we have integrated with a couple of short codes. So in this example, here is this short code. And as you can see, when we click it, we get these nice little editing options. So if I click this editing button, you know, I can see that, oh, okay, I have uh, an image here, which ties into the media gallery. And, you know, I have a little drop down here. I can select the kind of overlay I want the image to have, the header text the preamble, which is the subheading, and then how I want the text to be aligned and stuff, just in general, you know, options that, you, that you'd, you'd like to have to, to have a basic UI. And that's what basically what Shortcake give, gives us. So let's look a little bit of how to practically use Shortcake. So say that we're having, you know, we have a bit of text here, we want to mix this up, we want to have like a photo. So Shortcake integrates into the Add Media dialog. So after you install Shortcake, when you press Add Media, you will get a new tab, and that tab is going to say insert post element. And when you click that, you're going to have uh, you know different options. And Shortcake itself doesn't come with any you know integration. So if you just install Shortcake, you're not even going to get this tab. But there's a plugin called Shortcake Bakery, which is kind of like an experimental plugin that has a, a bunch of uh, you know pre pre built just. So I have both Shortcake Bakery here and also some shortcuts that we've done ourselves. So in this case, let's do a a short code that we build, which are, is for images. So I'm choosing image, and I'm going to pick some, some image here. I can choose how I want it to be aligned. So let's do inline left. I can write an image caption, and then I'll add it. And WordPress is going to, the short key is going to actually render that short code and pull it into the admin. So I don't even have to like, I don't even have to write any admin code for this. It just pulls in the what it would look like on the front end. So you can see our image with our image caption. We can edit it. Um, let's do maybe one more. Let's put in some an image comparison tool here, which is actually included in Shortcake Bakery. So you can actually even search here for the different names. We have image comparison. So let's pick two images. Insert that. As you can see, even though we can't use the tool here, oh yeah, actually we can. We can even do it like this. So you can have that. And and this was basically just a few rows of code, which I'm going to show you shortly. So it's very easy to integrate. Um, yes, that's what I had for this demo. Let's try to get back. So how do you do this? How do you integrate uh, a short code with, with Shortcake? So we have a short code here, which is actually the, the image short code I showed, with, which I aligned to the left. So it, it, the short code is called LRF Media. It takes in an image ID parameter. It takes in the display type, which is how it's supposed to be aligned. And it takes in a caption. So what we need to kind of think about is, of course, the different 
uh, shortcode attributes it accepts, image ID, display type, and caption, as well as just the, the, what's called the shortcode base, which is just the LRF media, what starts the shortcode. And then what we need to do is we have to register the shortcode base so that Shortcake knows that, well, it's okay, when we see this shortcode in the visual editor, we need to do our magic to, to make it a preview. We need to specify fields which are bound to attributes, which is how we are going to, to show different, you know, um, you have some drop downs, text, stuff like that, and different fields take different, you know, parameters, like the image ID will take an ID, which is what the, the image field does, which is here somewhere. Um, and then we have to, that's it. I mean, that's pretty much it. Then you just lean back and then shortcake does all the work. So I'm going to have a little bit of code here. So this is, this is basically all you need to integrate the, the image sh shortcode that we showed. So you start out by, um, let's see if I can get the mouse in here. You start out by hooking on init, quite, quite common uh, hook. You, here I just start a, a closure, but I mean, th you could just do this any way you like, just to run the, a function on the init hook. And then there's a special function called shortcode UI register for shortcode, where you basically you add you know, all the different labels, you add in which icon you want to use, which you can use dash icons, or you can even, I think there's some option to use even like a preview image, if you'd prefer that. Then you have the attributes array, and this is where you would uh, specify the different uh, fields that are bound to each uh, attribute. So in this case, we have the image, which is bound to the image ID attribute of the shortcode. And the, the type of, of um, library in this case is, is image, so that it knows it's going to show a, a, an image selector. And then underneath it, we have a select, which is just a drop down, and that is bound to the display type, which lets us position the shortcode. And at the end, we have the image caption, which is just a text field. So uh, just, just a very simple, straightforward way. And if you, if you'd like, you prefer, you, could even, you can even actually um, change the preview so that you can see that, OK, if, if I'm actually previewing this in the TinyMC editor, actually what I want is to show something else than on the front end. So you can even customize that for stuff that is not practical to show inside the editor. So we, right now, we're implementing this on our long read platform, which, is, uh, which we run on WordPress. So in this example, this is one of our earliest um, long read slash podcast uh, sites. And as you can see here, you have different you know, elements. You have the top header. You have the, the uh, list of episodes. And the kind of idea is that all of this will be easily insertable by the uh, content authors and easily be mixed with text. Uh, as well, and that it's also going to be quite you know versatile, so that you can use it for more you know just text editorial content for Im image uh, kind of um, reportage or whatever really. So, <coughs> so we want to, to enable basically um, our our editors in our case the news desk and and just journalists to display different types of content uh, and do it. In a, in a simple way. So here's one example for, um, for what, what it would look like when the editor has finished the work. You know, they can easily mix text with images and different types of, of um, interactive uh, elements. Even if you go to the bottom, even this uh, before, and even this, like this byline here, which shows the, uh, the authors, these previous next chapter pages, all of these can be integrated so that you can choose exactly what they want to show. And I, I also want to put out, which I missed earlier, is that all of this, even though it has like all these nice previews and stuff, if you look at this through the text mode, it's actually still short codes. So shortcake doesn't, you know, mangle anything. Uh, it, in the content, it's still going to be short codes, just with a nicer UI. So, really, I just wanted to talk about you know how you can have very different um, choices when you're we're choosing between site building and more like content creation. And I think if you're building a site for 
where people are actually going to go in and do some editorial stuff, just basically anything that's not just tr strictly building, then you may want to consider you know, going a more content creation as opposed to site builder route because the end user, or in this case, the, the, the person who's going to be writing content on the site might appreciate more of a content creation interface rather than a site building interface. Yeah, so site building and content creation, it targets different users, uh, different types of users. And, you know, it's, it's, it's still a new community. And Shortcake, you know, it's, it's, I've shown you, it's, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool already, but it has a lot of flaws. It's still pretty buggy, and I, wouldn't be, I would be very careful about using it in, like, high-grade pr um, production stuff. But it's getting there, and it has something like 80 issues right now logged on GitHub. So there's, <laughs> and there's, it's, uh, what's his name, Daniel, Daniel Bushhaber, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's doing most of the grunt work on that, but uh, he's doing great work and just methodically going through anything. But it's going to be a while before we see this in core. But meanwhile, doesn't mean we still can't have a little bit of fun with it. So I'm leaving you, with, this will be up later on the, um, on the meetup site, so you can check out the links for Shortcake, Shortcake Bakery, and of course the huge issue queue, which is very important to look at and be... <gasps> and that's it for me. Any questions? Do you know anything? I think there's room in the market for another all-encompassing sort of GUI editing tool to be sold. There seem to be a lot of competing ones and no one's really cracked it. And there's, you're thinking of like 50% of the internet or 20% of the internet is running WordPress. And there's a lot of big companies that would love to buy a great GUI editing tool. I think, I don't, I don't know. I mean, because you saw the, 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 the slide with the different builders. I mean, there's so many of them. And this, the frightening thing is so many of them are good. Like Visual Composer, Beaver Builder, like all those, those are really, really good tools. And when you look at more of the content editing side, it's a little bleaker. And I think if somebody were to capture a big part of the market, they would need to kind of fuse this. But as we've seen, it's like it's almost different user bases. So how do you do it? It's hard. It's, I used to look at it as two different phases of the site. Like first there is one site building, and then you have site content creation. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so first you make the pages how they are going to look. Then you put the editors and authors. They have only the subset. Yeah, and I and I, I agree. I, I don't think you you uh, you know it's it's pretty common today that you build you build the site in a drag and drop builder and you just hand it off to the user and then you show them like oh you just drag in this block and then you know they see that if you remember that page with all the different settings and they just go shit I hate this and they're gonna think that WordPress is complicated and you know it's and that's, that's why I'm saying you have to first build that page type, let's say, and then you only have one property, uh, drag image here. Yeah, so definitely. I think that's a good way. You have a question? Uh, I just want to ask if you know any of Swedish uh, agencies who are experimenting with this shortcake, it looks like. I haven't seen a lot of it. I mean, it's still very new, and I, I, I'm surprised, actually, because it's been around in the different Facebook groups multiple times. So I've kind of caught it from caught it from there, but I haven't. Like I guess it's very early still. I would, like it's alpha, <laughs> no, <laughs> barely. It's so buggy. Like even like it's just an example, and this is quite scary. If you put a bracket in one of the text fields, it just breaks the short code. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the level we're at. So I, I intentionally did not put any brackets in those short codes. <laughs> um, but I mean that's stuff that's gonna get fixed, and the whole idea is very sound. So hopefully, as this gains more traction, more people are gonna use it. But I don't know of any agencies that uh, use it right now. All right, thank you.